Hello everyone and welcome to the 36th Cocoa Programming Tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be continuing on where we left off in lesson 35 with our intro to NSView controllers. And in that tutorial, we kind of finished off with just showing how we could integrate uh, using two different view controllers and swapping between them in our window. But uh, we left off not being able to really resize our view and also, I didn't cover too much on how you could, um, you know, actually control the individual uh, window, or sorry, the view itself in the view controller. So in this tutorial, I'm just going to kind of expand off of where we finished in that one. So just as a recap anyway, uh, we basically created an application that can swap between our first and second view controller here. But of course, the issue was that when we go to resize this, the view isn't actually resizing um, our the view from our first or second view controller. It only resizes, of course, when we reswap. So anyway, um, that's what we're going to be working on today is uh, implementing that and how we can uh, get a bunch of other things to work as well. So anyway, uh, the first step uh, to actually getting this to auto resize is actually quite simple. So um, the trick is that we're not really going to be using uh, specifically anything to do with Coco Auto Layout in uh, this specific part. Uh, what we're going to be using is just auto resizing masks, which have been around since uh, basically the origin of Coco. And all it really means is uh, it's your basic struts and spring stuff that we always had with views. It just means how your view is going to resize. So um, this is nothing really new to do with Coco Auto Layout. It's just something that uh, you can do with your views. So. Um, all we have to really do to uh, allow this to work is tell our view controller view that it's going to resize with um, the view or its super view basically, which is our, our view that we're working in. So um, our, our view controller view again is the sub view of our view. And so we wanted to basically say, well, we're going to resize as we um, move the uh, view that it's in. So to do this, we can just say, our view controller view and we just want to tell it that it will auto resize we're going to set the auto resize mask for this view so we'll say set auto resize mask and this takes in um, basically a bunch of different uh, masks or um, in coco this is just when you use bitwise operators to you know kind of add on a bunch of uh, different values that represent masks so to speak in coco and so we've done this in the past when we were working with the drag and drop tutorials. Uh, if you might remember, we were saying uh, what kind of objects can be dropped in, and we were using bitwise operators to or a bunch of things together to allow us to kind of create a list of masks or uh, different things that can be added. And so this works basically the same way. You're just saying uh, what specific properties uh, this auto resizing mask is going to have on our uh, our view controllers view. So um, the two properties that we're going to use are basically that we want to have this mask so that it can resize the width and it can resize the height. So to do this we just say, uh, I'm just going to hide this little side part here, we're just going to say NSView width sizable and again if you're working with masks you can always just or a bunch of things together which just means you can add a bunch of uh, properties based or, or masks together and uh, that's just using the or key which is the vertical bar and you can just say ns view height sizable and so now we have two separate pieces that are sizable basically the uh, this what this is saying is that the view width will be resizable and the height will be resizable and this these will just uh, resize with the view that they're in so as our view our view uh, like this view right here which is the the big main one that houses our uh, sub views which are our view controller views so as our main view is resizing then this our view controller views will resize as well they just auto re, auto resize with um, as this view resizes as well so we can go ahead and check this out if we go ahead and run this and you'll see that we can go ahead and move this around and now our view is actually moving with uh, the window itself or the as as the main view is resizing our smaller view controller views are also resizing with it so that's that so it's working quite well 
So what are some of the things we can fix this as well? If we go to, you know, zoom in all the way in, you can see that, you know, we kind of disappear the text and it gets really small. So how can we, you know, set it so that it's not going to do that using Cocoa Auto Layout? Well, basically the thing that's getting too small is our view, which is that one in our main window here. So we can basically just say, well, we don't want this view to get too small. Basically, we uh, will want to keep it at a default say greater than 200 pixels for the height and width. So to do that, we can simply add different constraints to our view. So all we have to do is select our view like this. We go down here now in Xcode 4.3. Well, I think Xcode 4.3 had this anyway and above. Um, but if not, you can always go up to the editor and add these different things up here. But anyway, um, if you're in this version of Xcode, what you can do is select your view go down to the bottom right here and you have options for uh, pinning different parts of your views or whatever you're uh, referring to here, your buttons or whatever. And what we're going to do, uh, we wanted to set a certain height and width. We didn't want it to get any less than 200 pixels for both. So we can just say, well, we'll pin the width. And to edit these, we can just go over to our attributes inspector with that constraint selected. We'll say we want to keep it greater than or equal to. 200 and there we go that's uh, we just set a constraint for that and then if we want to change uh, the width as well we can just reselect our view and we'll pin the height now and we'll say we want to keep it greater than or equal to again 200 pixels and so if we go ahead and run this now you can see that when it goes and builds we can now only resize it to right there, which is equal to obviously 200 pixels for both the height and width. So that's uh, what we of course wanted for that. Now let's say that we want to you know apply some of these things to our other view controllers. So let's get into kind of how we can work with working with the view controller classes and the views uh, that they control. So let's say in our first view controller here, I wanted to add a button that will change this text. And you know, um, it's a very fairly simple example, but I think it works for our purposes. So we can just go ahead and throw this button on and I'll resize it so that it's centered here. And I know this is an extremely long button, but it's just uh, gonna be proving a purpose later when uh, we wanna resize and uh, make sure that this button, uh, that our view will be large enough to house this button basically later because since this button is actually uh, fairly large, it's uh, going to be that large, it's 388 pixels, it doesn't really matter, but my point is, is that it's going to be larger than 200 pixels, which are, uh, you know, our first, our main view over here was, just has to be greater than, but you'll see with Coco Auto Layout that uh, making this button this large will actually resize the window at least to make sure it can house that button size. So. Anyway, let's get on to how we can uh, control, using our view controller, control the contents of this view. So what we want to do is go into our first view controller class, which is obviously the controller for our first view controller nib. And what we're going to add is just a property here for our, um, our text field that we have. So we'll make a weak property to the NS text field and we will just call this cat text field, be very original here. And we'll also add an IB action so that we can change this text field whenever we press the button. So this is you know a very simple tutorial, but the main purpose of this is just showing you how you can work with your controller classes and your views. So anyway, uh, here we have our IB action and we'll just call it change text. And so with this, now we'll just go ahead and implement these things. So flip over here to our first view controller and you can see that uh, it already sets up uh, a lot of stuff for you actually in your implementation section. It already sets up a class extension. If you wanted to add your own uh, methods or properties to that, you could, and we, we covered that in the Objective C tutorials if you, um, you know, wanted to look at that. But anyway, that's what that is right there, but we're not too concerned. And that's just the init method uh, that this class uses. So uh, nothing too, you know, big right there. But all we really want to do here is first off, we want to synthesize our property. So we had our text field. And of course, I forgot to make this an IB outlet, which is very important for when we go to hook it up with our interface builder. 
So anyway, we IB outlet for our NS text field. And we go synthesize the text field. And the last part is to implement our IB action. So we had uh, change text was the method name. And as you know, I just like to change these back to IB action like that. And there we go. So now what we're going to do is just say our change text is just going to set the text field to be whatever. So we'll just say uh, self.text field, or I'll just use the instance variable instead because I kind of like doing that. It doesn't really matter, but you could use self.text field if you wanted to do that. Anyway, text field set string value, and we'll just set it to changed value. Alrighty, so now that we have that, we can go ahead and hook these all up in Interface Builder. As you can tell, this is basically the same as creating an app controller and working in our main menu nib. It works basically the same way, except you're just creating a separate nib file with a view controller instead of an app controller, and it's your files owner in this case. So we just connect from our files owner, which again is our first view controller. We connect the text field like this, we can connect the change text IB action like so, and uh, that should be everything. So um, the next step that I'm going to do is just make sure that our Cocoa Auto layout things will work properly so that this button can always be fully displayed like it is right here. So what we can do is we can set uh, so that the proper, the, right now the button will always be this uh, given length. As you can see, there's a constraint put on the button right here. And what we want to do, though, is make sure that the button never gets uh, pushed out of the view, basically. So when um, when we go to resize this down to like really small 200 by 200 pixels in our window, we want to make sure that this entire button length is always visible. So we can do that by adding some constraints to it. So what we can do is say we want to add a leading or trailing space we'll start with to the super view. And that just means that the end part right here will be a trailing space. And we want to say, well, we want this trailing space to always be greater than how about the standard value, which I think is uh, 12 or 15 pixels. I can't quite remember. But anyway, we always want it to be larger than Coco's standard value for, um, you know, for uh, human, uh, human interface guidelines or whatever they set up for that. So anyway, we will keep that like that. And we'll just say that we'll add a leading space as well. And we'll say that we want this to be greater than the standard as well. So there we go. We've just set up now that the button will never actually get outside of this view because it always has to have a greater space than the standard width. All right. So now we're pretty much all good to go and we can go ahead and run this. So go ahead, run this, and you can see that the window is nice and resized and I can't make it any smaller than this. If I go to switch to my second view now, I can actually resize it smaller. As soon as I switch back to my first view controller, it expands because Coco Auto Layout makes sure that um, my button has to be large enough or the, the area that my button takes up, it has to provide enough room for me because I specified the constraints here. So it resizes our window and our view likewise that, so that it can actually fit our first view controller view in there. And you can see that if I hit this button, uh, the controller, the first view controller, all the IB action stuff that we set up works perfectly. The button works and we, uh, what we said to do in the IB action works just fine. So anyway, that's uh, pretty much my summary anyway of how view controllers work. And there's tons more you can get into on really how you can store values. Because, um, for example, uh, once, you know, if I switch back from, uh, you know, if I leave my first view controller, go back to my second, now I go back to my first, you can see that our text field actually dropped its previous information because if you remember back to the, the 35th tutorial, which was the previous one, we never actually store any of these values anywhere. So that's another thing that we could work on is how we could actually store uh, these values. And usually what we'd want to do is actually set up, um, you know, probably models for this or actually just to uh, keep some of these views in memory depending on what you're trying to set up. But anyway, I'm just showing you uh, just the general things that you uh, should know about working with view controllers. It's uh, fairly simple anyway, switching between them. And as you can see, uh, it's nice to work with Cocoa Auto Layout to specify how your views work 
and your window will automatically resize to fit uh, what it needs to fit. So that's pretty much all I had to cover for uh, this tutorial. Um, I have just a few things to talk about for upcoming stuff. Um, basically, I'd like to know if anybody has any mic suggestions for um, what I can buy. I'm looking for just to get some better mic quality with this since I've been uh, still using the built-in microphone, if you can believe it or not, for all these tutorials in my MacBook Pro. And uh, it'd be nice to get some, you know, better sound quality in this. So uh, anyway, if you have any mic suggestions, uh, preferably obviously a kind of unidirectional mic or cardioid-like uh, pattern. But anyway, uh, if you have any suggestions, feel free to leave those in the comments. Uh, please subscribe to the channel. And also, we're going to have a nice little uh, giveaway coming up fairly soon, which will be a $50 iTunes gift card. And that should be uh, probably up next week sometime anyway, whenever I get back uh, from a little trip. So anyway, uh, I will uh, see you probably next week. And uh, again, please subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And I will see you next tutorial.